How are you guys doing today? Felonious Bitcoin here. So today I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about precious metals. The reason I bring precious metals up, the globe is facing an economic crisis, massive food shortages, millions upon millions of people without work. We already are starting to see thousands upon thousands of families without food. The reason I bring up precious metals in this video is because there's a lot of people out there that seem to think that a cryptocurrency is going to be the next biggest thing in terms of being able to transact, but I just don't see it. If you're out of a job, how are you going to afford to pay your cell phone bill? How are you going to afford to pay your internet or power bill, let alone your mortgage or anything else that you have going on? That's the point that I'm trying to make is that you can't trust in some sort of cryptographic hashing algorithm to save you. We have so many people that are so brainwashed to think that this is the next hottest thing. That's where all the money's going to go and I'm going to chase the money. And that's a that's a losing man's game. You might have Bitcoin in a wallet somewhere, but is that guaranteed tomorrow if you can't pay your cell phone bill or if the lights go out? Think about it. It's a very risky asset. It's brand new. I just don't see how that's going to make any sense, especially during an economic collapse. And if history is any indicator of, of what's going to happen next, people are going to resort back to precious metals. They're already starting to do that in other countries that are experiencing hyperinflation. Venezuela, India, China, Russia. We have numerous countries, one after the other, that are resorting back to precious metals. The people in charge at the World Economic Forum are calling what we're about to experience as the Great Reset. If you can put two and two together, you can understand where I'm coming from when I say that cryptocurrencies are not going to be uh, there to save you. Sure, they might go to the moon, and that doesn't even matter because if you're, t if you're pricing in the value of a Bitcoin in U.S. dollars, and, and US dollars aren't worth anything, then what do you ha what do you really honestly have? You don't have much. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that like, even though you might have Bitcoins in a wallet somewhere and the price goes to $300,000 a coin, what are you really able to do with that cryptocurrency if nobody can accept it because nobody has the means to transact, be it power or internet? That's the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that you don't wanna put all your eggs into that one basket, so to speak, because you're gonna lose. It's obvious to me. I used to be one of the biggest crypto enthusiasts. I used to be a big Bitcoin miner from the early days, okay? I was one of the biggest believers you could ever meet uh, when it came to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. With the situation that we're presented with today, I just don't see that being the case. Maybe after the economic collapse takes place, long after the economic collapse takes place, that might be the monetary system might. I'm not saying that it will be, but I'm also not saying that it won't be. I guess the point of today's video is that I want you guys to be cautious where you put your money because there's so much risk out there right now. And I don't think it's a risk that people should be willing to take, not at a time like this. I, if I was you, I would be trying to take the least amount of risk as possible. And with that being said, I think the safest place to be is in precious metals, gold and silver. They have a 6,000 plus year history as our monetary basis for humanity, and they haven't let us down yet. If you're looking for stability, that's where you're gonna find it, is in the precious metals. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, they're convenient, they're fast, relatively. Two hours later. The problem with that is you're also at the mercy of the miners to process your transactions. If they don't want to accept your transactions because they don't like the fee that you're paying for the transaction, then they don't have to accept it. It's not a sovereign currency, so if somebody steals your Bitcoin out of your wallet, which has happened numerous times over and over again, then it's highly unlikely that any government is going to look into it and try to help you out to get your, your lost funds back. If you haven't figured out by now that the government's not there to help you with anything, then I don't know what to say because... It's kind of obvious at this point what their intentions are. And I think their intentions are to follow through with this great reset. There's going to be a lot of people that suffer. I'm kind of sad just thinking about it because there's going to be millions upon millions of people that die, at least. I mean, if not billions of people that die, not only because they can't afford a place to live, but because of the food shortages. That's the number one issue here right now is, is food shortages. But how are you going to buy your food? You know what I mean? People need to have some sort of confidence in whatever it is that you're trying to transact with. And a lot of people don't know what Bitcoin is. A lot of people don't bother with it. So you can't really 
push people to, to accept it. J you know, you can't push people to accept something that they don't have an understanding of. As far as like the Great Reset goes, I think that it's gonna be a voluntary basis where people are gonna find fundamental underlying value in the assets that you transact with. And so far, history has shown humanity that only gold and silver can be trusted as the monetary instrument of choice. I'd like to tell you guys about why I came down to Texas. I came down here so that I could start a farm. Vegetables, cows, or eggs, uh, just to be more self-sufficient so that way I don't have to rely on a grocery store, on other people. So that's something that I advocate for you guys to do. And I mean, if you guys think I'm giving bad advice, then please uns unsubscribe to my channel right now because I don't know how else to put it, but I'm, t I'm here to help people the best that I know how. And I think that begins with spreading accurate and knowledgeable information. If I'm being completely honest, YouTube isn't the best place to do that because they censor a lot of stuff that people talk about. What's really unfortunate is there's a lot of people out there that still have no idea about what's going on. They still think that their government and the people in charge have their best interests. But I know that it's videos like this that make it more and more apparent to people and it makes people wake up every single day to what's really happening. That's why I love doing what I do because I know that somebody out there, even if it's one person a day, one person at a time is making a difference and that's all that matters. Because with one person spreading information, it spreads to two people, and then two people spread it to six people. It's contagious, kind of like this infection, ex except not as deadly. I guess my purpose is to take part in a global awakening where people have an understanding of what really matters in life. I hope that you'll take that journey with me and to spread this message that people should try to be as self-reliant as possible. If you're not as self-sufficient as possible, you're at a disadvantage in many ways because you're gonna have to be reliant on somebody else. And the more reliant you are on somebody else, you're skimping on the quality of whatever product you're going after. You're skimping on the quantity of the product that you're going after. And you, you have to take time out of your day to find out who has these products. So you're, you're wasting your time, energy, and money when you're not doing it yourself. If you do it yourself, you can be proud. You know what I mean? You can be proud of what you, what you accomplished. But you can also pass that information on to future generations to teach the right way to do things. I think humanity took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> it's my mission as a human being to get humanity back on track as much as possible because there's so many people that are asleep at the wheel and in the other oncoming lane there's an 18 wheeler coming right at you people are just completely asleep at the wheel i don't even know how to put it it's insane watching what i've seen take place with people and not even being awake to what's going on here now with that being said i knew that this economy was going to crash for decades now i took ap history classes in, in high school and i guess i can attribute a lot of what i know today to that in many ways school is an indoctrination camp but in many ways it's also not bad as far as like information goes because the people in charge they leave people breadcrumbs a lot of places believe it or not and i'm going to share with you guys a clip from the simpsons it was season 11 episode 17 back in the year 2000 when lisa simpson was president and they pretty much predicted that President Trump would be our president and that the economy would crash. Lisa Simpson said something about the three R's and I think that attributes a lot to what Biden has said to us with the build back better uh, phrase. 1600. Sweet. Excellent question. Yes, I am proud to be America's first straight female president. <laughs> Helen? Wasn't I wearing a hat? Yes, yes you were. Now, in conclusion, my administration will focus on the three R's. Reading, writing, and refilling the ocean. Thank you very much. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. The country is broke? How can that be? Well, remember when the last administration decided to invest in our nation's children? Big mistake. The Balanced Breakfast Program just created a generation of ultra-strong super criminals. And Midnight Basketball taught them to function without sleep. What about my pledge to build the world's largest bookmobile? Isn't there any money left for that? No, and we borrowed from every country in the world. It kind of raises some questions in my mind, like how did they know 
that all this was going to happen? What can you do as a person to prepare for it? If you are willing to recognize the signs and as conspiracy theory oriented as they may seem, they're really not. Because look at what the situation going on around you. When you hear somebody is a conspiracy theorist, I would take them very seriously and hear what they have to say because it's been proven more than once that I'm a former conspiracy theorist as these things start coming true when I started stockpiling my food years and years ago, MREs and whatnot. Now people are asking me for my advice. What do you, what do you suggest? What would you do? I tell people the same thing. You know what I mean? You should prepare the best that you can. At the end of the day, the best thing that you can possibly do is educate yourself. Educate yourself and don't take my word for it. And you're gonna hear this from other people as well and that's the best advice that anybody can give you is don't take any one person's advice. Look into things for yourself and find out accurate information and that's the best way you can do it. And how you do that is you cross-reference your resources. That way you can make sense of this crazy world that we live in today to get to the bottom of the truth. I gotta get out of here, I got a lot of work to do. This farm isn't gonna take care of itself and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my content if you can. Please leave a like on today's video, please comment down in the comment section and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would very much appreciate it. You guys make my channel possible and without you, none of this would exist. So I wanna say thank you to everybody out there for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.